let's go to problem 17. In problem 17, Francisco acquired 100% of the voting shares of Beltran on January 1st of 2014. In exchange, Francisco paid $450,000 in cash and issued 104,000 shares of its own dollar par stock, common stock. But it had a fair value of 12 bucks per share on that date. So what do we know the consideration is, guys? The cash plus the 104,000 shares times 12 bucks a share. That's what they paid for Beltran. The combination is a statutory merger with Beltran subsequently dissolved as a legal corporation. Beltran's assets and liabilities are assigned to a new reporting unit within Francisco. The following reports the fair values of the reporting unit for January 1st, 2014 and December 31st, 2015 along with the various respective book values. So what we need to do is we don't have to deal with these consolidations anymore. It dissolved, okay? So we are going to prepare the entries showing the merger, okay? So let's look at this. We've got <coughs> the fair values on January 14th and we've got the fair values on January 15th along with the book values. Now I want to go back and talk about something that I did not discuss today. It's in the lectures. But their goodwill is never allowed to be amortized. Instead, what has to happen with goodwill is if it gets impaired, it needs to be written off. So basically, what happens here is every year a company needs to test for goodwill impairment. We're never allowed to just amortize goodwill because it has an indefinite life. Instead, we need to make sure that goodwill has not lost value. So how are we going to check to see if goodwill's lost value? The way we're going to check this is we have to test for impairment each year. If goodwill hasn't lost value, there's nothing we need to do. But if the goodwill has been impaired, in other words, the value isn't what it once was, in that year we have to write it down to what the true value is. So, so how do you test that? Like, that's how what we're going to do. We're going to come up with the fair values of all the other assets, okay? And we're going to compare that to the fair value that we initially purchased it for. And then see where we've got a loss and assign it to specific areas. So basically what we're gonna do, after the acquisition, we can't amortize, we have to do this impairment approach, know that. So how do we test for it? Once Goodwill's recorded as of the acquisition date, the value doesn't change. We don't amortize it, it stays the same until we either sell a portion of the subsidiary or there's been a decline, a permanent, not a temporary decline, but a permanent decline in value. And then in that case, we test for it. So basically, the way we test for it is I 
Uh, let me go back here. Let's look at this. Um, the way we test for this is evaluate relevant events or circumstances to see whether it is more likely than not that the fair value of the unit is less than the carrying amount on our books. Is it more likely than not that the fair value is less than the carry amount? If it is, then we have to look at the fair value of the unit to its carrying amount with the goodwill involved. And if the fair value is less than its carrying amount, then we're going to need to do something. As we move on to the second step of goodwill impairment, we then calculate the implied fair value of the reporting unit's goodwill with what we show as carried in the books of goodwill. If the implied value is less than its in carry, um, carrying amount, we're going to have to write it down. So, the way in which we're going to do this is we're going to look at this next problem to understand how this works. So, we show the fair values of the reporting unit Beltran in January of 2014 when we acquired it. And then also we have the fair values of 2015 and the book values of 2015. So as you can see here, <coughs> we show on our books the inventory has a higher fair value than the book value. Our patents are up 100,000. Our customer relationships are up 30,000. Equipment is up 5,000. And our accounts payable and long-term liabilities are the same. Fair to book is the same. First thing we're going to do is prepare the journal entries to acquire the, the business uh, or the acquisition date. So what we're going to do here is we gave them cash of 450 plus we gave them stock of, I forget now, 13 bucks a share times um, Hundred and four thousand shares. A hundred four thousand shares at twelve bucks a share. Thank you. So the combination of the cash paid plus the stock is one million six ninety eight. That's the consideration. So we know right away this is a consolidate or a, a statutory merger. That company's dissolved got merged into the, the existing company. So what we do to record purchasing this company, we're going to show the assets that we received from Beltran and the liabilities we assumed. So what we're going to do, let's go back here and look at this again. When we look at it, Excuse me. Fair value as of 1114. Cash, we're going to debit 75,000. Receivables 193. Inventory 281. Patents 525. Customer relationships 500. Equipment 295. We also are assuming their, their liabilities, their accounts payable and long term. So that is also going to be included in here. So if we take all the assets we know, we take into account their liabilities, we have to show the cash we forked out plus the par value and the additional paid in capital on the stock. The difference is going to be goodwill. It's that simple. So whatever we paid for the company, minus the net effect of the liabilities we've assumed, 
plus the assets. The excess is going to be goodwill. 400000 is goodwill as of the acquisition date. Again, this isn't a subsidiary anymore, guys. There's no investment in subsidiary. We're buying outright the company and merging them with our own. Do you see what I'm saying? It's not operating separately. That's why we're, sh we're showing an increase of all these assets. Okay? So the first entry to show the acquisition of this um, reporting unit is showing the fair value, showing the transaction of cash and stock, and then the rest is goodwill. Now it says to us, on December 31st, 2015, this is two years later, guys, Francisco opts to forego any goodwill impairment qualitative assessment <coughs> and estimates that the total fair value of the entire Beltran reporting unit is $1,425,000. What amount of goodwill impairment should Francisco recognize on its 2015 income statement? So it's just saying, you know, we're not going to create these different quali qualifying aspects. We're just going to say we know the fair value now is $1,425,000. What are we going to do? What we have to do first, we start by saying what is the, and guys, do you see how subjective this is? You see why sometimes goodwill doesn't get written down? It wasn't there. So you understand this. That's why I was asking the questions about it because I was really curious how we ended up figuring that out and how that all went. Mm -hmm. Good for you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, and that's what happens a lot. I mean, they should be testing for it yearly. Which I don't think we did. And then all of a sudden we had. Hell, of course not. Whitley do it and they were like, uh, you got to write this off. <laughs> and it's a big hit all at once. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to look at the fair value and the book value. The book value is $1,585,000. How do we know that? The book value, we bought it for $1,698,000. Are they telling us, I, I guess? They're just telling us that, so I, there's nothing I can do. I'm trying to plug in the number, and I can't. So they're telling us the fair value, the book value. Oh, I know where the book value is. I believe that shows up here. The book value as of 1231.15. So if we took into account the cash, the receivables, the inventory, patents, customer relationships, equipment, um, the goodwill, and then the minus the accounts payable. That should give us the um, book value of $1,585,000. Okay, that's how we got that figure, from the information they provided us. Then